Are you lost not knowing how to optimize your laptop or PC? Do you have dated hardware that just can't keep up with the times? Do you struggle to hit 60 FPS on decent settings? Or are you gaming on integrated graphics? If you answered yes to any of these questions, this video is for you. I have an entry level gaming laptop from 2021 and I can mostly get 60 plus FPS in most AAA titles that have launched recently. But next gen gaming is truly upon us friends. With minimum requirements of games coming out in 2023, seeing a steep incline, there's never been a better time to fully optimize your gaming rig to soak out every little percentage of performance you can. So in this video, I'll share some surefire ways to get the most out of your hardware. Let's get some extra frames, shall we? So sit down, strap in, let's go. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is connect your laptop to an external monitor. Because by default, low-end laptops do not have a MUX switch. And what a MUX switch is, is basically it connects your monitor directly to your GPU. So by default, uh, low-end laptops, everything that's rendered on your screen first has to go through your integrated graphics. So by connecting to an external monitor, you're going to be connecting on your screen directly to your, to your GPU. And you'll see a boost uh, anywhere between 5 to 15% straight off the bat. For step number two, if you've got a game boost on your system, I highly recommend it. Get rid of it. Delete it. Get it off your computer. Because the problem with a game booster is that it, it supposedly optimizes your system with one click. But what they don't tell you is that it uses a lot of RAM and it uses a lot of CPU cycles just to have that game booster open. Now I'll link a video that I did recently on Razer Cortex and I'll show you exactly what I mean. But if you've got a system with 8 gigs of RAM and less, the last thing you want to do is have a game booster because in the video that I'm going to link, I'll show you that just to run Razer Cortex, you're almost using, it almost uses one gigabyte of RAM just to run Razer Cortex. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to up your RAM usage, it's going to cause CPU bottlenecks. If you've got a game boost on your computer, get rid of it. For step number three, you want to fully optimize your CPU. So for this step, there are going to be a whole bunch of subcategories as well as external videos that I want you to click onto for the more complicated issues. But let's get to the first subcategory. So the first subcategory under CPU optimization would be to undervolt your CPU. Because in laptops, especially in laptops, heat is a performance killer. And I'm just going to illustrate that to you quickly in throttle stop. So let me go to throttle stop here. And in the fiber section, as you can see, I've got a minus 165 millivolt um, offset on my CPU core. And then on my cache, CPU cache, I've got 100, uh, minus 100 millivolts. So once I go do my benchmark with my, C, uh, with my um, undervolt applied, as you can see, my temperatures are in the mid to uh, mid 70s to late 80s so guys as you can see it's mid 70s to late 80s when I'm stressing the CPU to its max with the undervolt applied now if I go into fiber and I uh, take away my undervolt or take my undervolt off and then on cache same thing set my undervolt to zero apply so there's no undervolt anymore and then I do the TS bench again instantaneous you can see I'm starting off in the mid 80s and you're gonna see those temperatures go up into the 90s So guys, as you can see, by just applying an undervolt, you're ready. Uh, I don't have a very strong CPU, and it is quite a hot day, 
but just by applying an undervolt, you can lower your CPU temperatures by, by 10 to 15 degrees. And to top it off, because your CPU and your GPU typically um, share the same heatsink, undervolting makes such sense because it's going to lower your temperatures on your CPU and by extension it's going to lower your temperatures on your GPU as well. Guys, if you aren't able to undervolt your CPU because your CPU is locked in the BIOS, what I will do is I'll put a link to a video I did recently. Here we go, unlock, un unlock undervolting in most laptops with a locked BIOS. So just click on that video, follow those steps, you'll be able to unlock undervolting and then you'll be able to unvault to your heart's content. For the next subcategory, what we're going to do is tweak our Windows Advanced System settings. So what you do is go to your Windows key, click on it, and then just type in Advanced System Settings. I've got a little shortcut, so I'm just going to skip over here. So once you're in Advanced System Settings, what you want to do is go to Performance, and then just click on Adjust for Best Performance, and then I like to use Drop Shadows, Smooth Edges on Screen Fonts, so Translucent Selection Triangle, and Show Thumbnails hit apply then what you want to do is go to advanced and we want our CPU scheduler set to high priority so just click on background services programs background services and programs okay and then the following thing what you want to do is your virtual memory now by default it's probably going to be set to automatic but I actually did a video and I'll link it in the description we actually find that you're going to get your best results when you set a custom size of 8 gigabytes, so your initial size is going to be 8192, your maximum size is going to be 8192 as well. Once you're done with that, just click set, press apply, press OK, and then it's going to prompt you to restart your computer. For the next CPU optimization, what you want to do is tweak your system configuration. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on your Windows icon over here, and then I want you to type in system configuration. For me, I've got a shortcut, so I am going to go over here. And then once you've got this little uh, window open system configuration, go to boot, go to advanced options, and then tick number of processes, and then select the maximum amount of processes that you have for your computer. And then once that's done, you're going to hit apply, and that's going to prompt you to restart your computer. So just go ahead and do that and restart your computer. For the next subcategory in CPU optimization, we are going to be optimizing the Windows settings as well as background apps and using a program called Windows Privacy Dashboard. So what am I talking about? When you go to your Windows icon over here, click that, go to settings. We're going to be optimizing all these settings over here because there's telemetry, it's going to cause latency and it's putting extra strain on your RAM and your CPU. It's using extra RAM cycles and extra CPU cycles. So, um, what I want you to do, if I'm going to put this in the video, it's going to be a bit long. So, I'm going to put a link to full CPU optimization guide. Just click on that link. And then specifically, there's going to be a section here called Windows Settings and Windows Privacy Dashboard. I want you to follow those steps and you'll be able to optimize your C CPU a little bit further. For the next subcategory under CPU optimization, we're going to be disabling services. So what am I talking about? When you go to the Windows icon over here, just type in services. I've obviously got the shortcut, so I'm going to click on services. So it's all these services over here. You're going to be disabling services that aren't necessary to run Windows. And the reason we're going to do that is because it's going to save you RAM usage and it's going to save you CPU usage. So your RAM and CPU cycles are going to be lower and it's also going to cause less input lag and it's going to lower latency. So guys, if I put that whole process in this video, it's going to make it a little bit long. So what I want you to do is in the description of the video, I'm going to put a link to this video over here, services safe to disable in 22H2. Just go ahead, follow the steps there. You'll lower your RAM usage, you'll lower your CPU usage and your computer will be very happy. Right, for the next CPU optimization, what we're going to be loading is the Bitsum highest performance power plan. 
These days you can't load the Ultimate Performance Power Plan anymore, but Bitsum is basically exactly the same as Ultimate Performance. So what I want you to do is in the description of the video, I'll put a link to this video over here, how to load missing high performance power plan. Just go ahead and click on that video, go through those steps and you'll be able to load the Bitsumize performance power plan and this should give you a couple of extra percent in terms of performance and FPS. Right, for our last CPU optimization, we're gonna be disabling Windows Defender. And guys, this one is optional. Um, this can be reversed. So what I want you to do is um, press down on the Windows icon and R, type in Reg Edit. Okay, and then you're gonna go Computer, HK Local Machine, Software, Policies, Microsoft, and then in Windows Defender, what I want you to do is under Windows Defender, right click it, and then just create a new key and then new key you're going to rename SpyNet, capital S, capital N. In SpyNet, you're going to create a new D word and then you're going to rename it SpyNet Reporting. So the capital S, capital N, capital R. So I'm just going to delete this. Okay, and then SpyNet Reporting, to, uh, to switch off Windows Defender, you're going to give it a value of 3. Press OK and then go out of a reg edit, restart your computer and then you can see Windows Defender is disabled. And then once you want to re-enable Windows Defender, just come back into reg edit, just go computer, HK local machine, software, policies, Microsoft, Windows Defender, SpyNet, SpyNet reporting, just right click this modify and give it a value of zero restart your computer and then Windows Defender will be active again and guys the reason I say uh, this is for people with really low-end computers where Windows Defender actually does uh, affect your performance so people using integrated graphics or with very very weak uh, graphics cards this might give you a nice little bump in performance right that's gonna bring us to step number four optimize your GPU so subcategories here are, we're going to set our games to high priority in RegEdit. We're going to optimize our settings in NVIDIA Control Panel. We're going to make sure that game mode is set on and enabled. We're going to make sure that HAGS or Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling is enabled. We're going to use a program called MSI Mode to make sure that we're getting the highest priority on our games. We're going to uh, use a registry tweak, which is just going to really bring out the, the utmost performance for our GPU. But guys, what I'm going to need you to do is, yet again, on my YouTube page, I'm going to link in the description to a video called Full NVIDIA Optimization, and then all those steps are going to be in, the, in this video. So just watch this video and it's going to show you to how, how to do all those steps and you're going to be able to completely optimize your NVIDIA GPU. Step number five is an obvious one. Set your game to the lowest settings where you can get a stable frame rate. Step number six is search the internet for configuration files for low spec um, and look specifically for whatever game you are playing at that point in time and then step seven and this one sounds very stupid but I have to include it play all the games The Witcher came out in 2015 it can run on a potato PC you have Mass Effect from 2010 or Mass Effect 2 from 2010 which is an absolute breeze to play and you can play it on the oldest integrated graphics art and guys that's pretty much the list. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to smash that like button. But most importantly, guys, as people like you that make a difference in this world, have a good day. Cheers.